Welcome to the Deep Dive Politics. Uh, I am Alion Rözcelik from Turkey. Uh, today we talk about uh, Turkey-EU relations after the critical European Union summit on uh, 10th to 11th December. It seems that Turkey has entered an era where it faces uh, double challenges, both from the United States and the European Union. Today, uh, Samuel Doveri Westerby is joining me to uh, elaborate the recent news and issues taken up by the European Union leaders last week in the uh, European uh, summit. So the last EU summit was critical for the EU leaders. Uh, they discussed several issues, including Brexit uh, deal or no deal, endorsement of the EU budget depending on the human rights records, uh, which was blocked by Hungary and Poland. Also enhancing transatlantic uh, relations and of course the prospect sanctions on Turkey. Our focus is on Turkey and I want to get your opinions about the summit. If we recall how the uh, relationship uh, between the EU and Turkey has been uh, evolved uh, for the last five years, the bilateral relationship was confined to two major problems. One is refugee crisis uh, related to the war in Syria and uh, East Mediterranean questions. Both of them are in, uh, in fact vital uh, for each side and they exhaust uh, both Brussels and Ankara. So, Before going into the details, I'm a little bit curious about one thing. European Union leaders discussed the imposing the prospect uh, sanctions on Turkey at the dinner. And uh, at the same time, they were discussing another issue, which is related to the uh, European Union's transatlantic relations. Is this just coincidence or any particular reason for that? Um, before I answer this question, let me first Uh, say thank you, Ali, for inviting me onto your Deep Dive Politics channel. I am very supportive of this initiative, and I think there's some very good discussions on here, and I'm happy to be here. With regards to your um, question about what they discussed at the dinner, of course, I can only give you a, a I can only give you my opinion of what I have heard through rumors, because only the only the leaders and uh, and a few others are present at that table. But let me maybe also give a small context. Uh, the leaders at the European Council this month came to an agreement on measures against Turkey, uh, which should very much be seen as a, as a continuation of uh, the European Council conclusions from uh, the 1st and the 2nd of October. Um, that means that the EU now, so as of last week, have come to the conclusion that they will adopt what they call additional listings based on its decision on the 11th of November 2019, which was the year before, where they had already started the restrictive measures in, in view of Turkey's uh, unauthorized, unauthorized drilling activities in the Eastern uh, Mediterranean. Now, this remains a little bit vague Uh, especially if you're not a lawyer or if you don't work for the EU. But the original decision from 2019, so the one that they're basing the new council conclusion from last week on, says, and I can read it for you, uh, the framework will make it possible to sanction individuals or entities responsible for or involved in unauthorized drilling activities of hydrocarbons in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, persons, entities providing financial, technical, or material support for the above mentioned drilling activities. And what does that mean? Um, it means theoretically that, that the EU now and the EAS, based on that 2019 uh, directive, has now allows for Uh, Turkish companies, defense contractors, subcontractors, and people to be added onto this list. And in the recent document, the one from last week, the council conclusion, the point number 30 says something, I don't remember it by heart, but it says something like that the commission and the high representative, which is Josep Borrell, uh, have to submit a paper or a report uh, by March 21, on the instruments and options available to 
continue with the extension of the scope of the above mentioned decision, et cetera, et cetera. And they can basically, uh, so they can use uh, the sanctions against individuals or entities, meaning companies. And this will very much depend on how the high representative Borrell and the EAS see fit and also how Turkey acts in the next few months as well as how the member states interact with the EAS and Borrell. Um, so that's a little bit the context of how, of, of how the EU will respond. But that point is uh, basically appears to demonstrate that all options in some, some way are on the table. And then maybe coming a little bit to your question, uh, of course, this is, is linked to the US and the new Biden administration as well. It's absolutely no secret that, that Joe Biden will take a much tougher and a much more uh, democratic, liberal, ideological position with regards to the international relations. And, and, and that, of course, very much suits Europe and the EU in many ways. Uh, only a few days ago, um, the Senate and the House of Representatives passed and approved the National Defense Authorization Act from, from 21. And this is a fiscal uh, year budget, which includes, you know, things like energy, the Pentagon, national security programs, as well as the Katsa sanctions uh, on Ankara. And... Um, I mean, based primarily on the fact that, uh, that, that Turkey has decided to purchase these uh, S-400 uh, missiles instead of, uh, instead of uh, American products. So officially, uh, you know, once that is passed, there are 30 days until these sanctions can or will be Im imposed by the U.S. Um, but yesterday evening, uh, the Katsa sanctions were officially announced by, uh, by Pompeo. And uh, I briefly read them. I haven't looked at them in so much detail, but as far as I can understand, they're hitting very much the Turkish defense sector and they're less light than were expected. So notably, they're going to hit the SSB and senior people. I think there were four listings of senior people, the highest level officials working in the presidency of defense industries, the SSB. Um, in practice, this of course means things like visa restrictions. It means no official loans anymore. It means international financial institutions cannot give loans, at least not in dollars. It will mean a, a ban on export licenses. And then coming again uh, back to the EU and its own sanctions <coughs> or potential sanctions, which are being uh, negotiated until March. Uh, these will very much uh, now be determined and dependent on these U.S. sanctions. Now, we can be sure about a few things and we can be unsure about a few other things, if we want to be honest. What we can be sure about is that the EU's response will depend on the Katsa sanctions, just in terms of timing. Katsa sanctions are now, EU sanctions are in March. But in terms of the level of sanctioning and content of these sanctionings, it's more difficult to say, for example, um, will hard US cuts of sanctions, which we're seeing now, mean that the EU also implements harder sanctions? Question mark. I don't think so. In fact, I think it's a possibility, but it, you can also very much imagine that US harder sanctions simply mean that the EU freed load on the US sanctions and then tone down their own sanctions. But this of course will depend on, on coordination. It will depend on negotiations with the, with the US, uh, none of which we can be perfectly sure about at the moment. For example, there may be more coordination, meaning that the US sanctions institutions, whereas the EU continues to sanction people on the list or subcontracting companies which are linked to the East Med uh, drilling. Now, just a final point. Um, 
about the, the level of coordination which we can expect between the US and the, and the EU, <clears throat> I think it's important to remember that in the council conclusions of last week, there is a point which says, um, I don't remember the exact, uh, exact phrase, but it says that, I think it's point 30 or 29 or something like this, which basically says that the EU will coordinate with the US on uh, matters or subjects or areas related to the East Med. So what can we definitely expect is coming back to your question about the, the dinner. I think at the dinner, they sat and spoke about how they're going to coordinate with the US and in which chronology and, and taking into account which of the EU interests and member state interests when negotiating with the US in the upcoming month uh, with regards to East Med and how the EU should develop its own sanctions vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Turkey. Of course, um, with the asterisk, which is if Turkey changes position or shows very serious degrees of goodwill, then all of that can, of course, be dropped. Well, uh, someone, it was really a deep dive analysis of uh, the first questions. Actually, I asked for whether there is a coincidence uh, between the agenda which was taken up uh, at the dinner. And you said that, yes, there's kind of like a link between the uh, United States CASA uh, on Turkey. And they try to see what is going to uh, suggested by the Washington later on. 